Um, first start off by saying your names. Steven Sold. Steven Reisner. And your position? I'm a member of council of the APA and I'm a co-founder of the Coalition for Ethical Psychology. Can you explain what just happened? What just happened is that after nine years of collusion and deceit between the American Psychological Association and the Department of Defense and the Bush administration, after nine years of what has now become a major scandal, the APA Council, the APA, <coughs> the APA, <coughs> sorry, the APA Council turned that around. The APA Council acknowledged that it had been led down a deceitful path that all of our policies in the past which claimed to uphold human rights were shams. But today, for the first time, we passed a real policy that upholds human rights and prohibits psychologists from being involved in any way in torture, cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment insofar as those are part of national security interrogations in detainee conditions. Any way that our national security apparatus abuses detainees, we have said that we are opposed to that. We demand human rights be applied in all cases and that no psychologist will ever participate in any detention camp, in any interrogation, in any of that because there are abuses going on and we want to stop those abuses. Who determines whether it's inhumane? What is the resolution that was passed? Well, there are two parts. First of all, it simply holds a bright line against any psychologist being involved in any national security interrogations or detention conditions. It's a bright line. So it doesn't matter who determines it or not. So there's that. But second, what we did was we took the decision on what is the judgment on what is torture, cruel, and human and degrading treatment away from U.S. law, away from the United States reservations to the United Nations Convention Against Torture, and aligned APA standards with international standards, with the United Nations Convention, with the United Nations Committee Against Torture, with what the UN Rapporteurs Against Torture and Rapporteurs for Human Rights, what they say is now APA policy. We, we, we bow to their international human rights judgment and we will follow it. And what is a national security interrogation? A national security interrogation is, we defined it, it's any interrogation or, or any conditions of confinement in support of an interrogation that takes place uh, outside of the protections of domestic criminal law. So it could be for the DOD, it could be for the FBI, it could be for the CIA, it could be in black sites, it could be foreign governments that do interrogations on our behalf, it could be private contractors. We have prohibited psychologists from being involved in any of those. The only exception has to do with domestic law enforcement where constitutional law, Miranda rights apply, that we, we carve that out for the time being. We are fully aware that abuses go on domestically as well, and we are very concerned about that. But this particular issue has to do with the fact that psychologists were responsible for our nation's torture program. And now the APA is no longer supporting psychologists in those roles, but actively and clearly opposing any possibility of psychologists playing those roles. And what if someone does participate? What does that mean? What does it mean to pass an APA, an American Psychological Association resolution? Well, that would be very serious now, because this resolution is implementable. We are moving to our ethics committee to make sure that such people will be held accountable for ethics violations. If someone is held accountable for an ethics violation at the American Psychological Association, that is in turn taken very seriously by state licensing boards. So for people to violate this resolution, their license could be on the line. So I'm just, I'm going to put it though in the other way. What this does is it protects psychologists in the military, in national security settings. It lets them know that they have the APA behind them when they refuse to participate in any torture, cruel, inhumane, or degrading treatment. They, we have their back. They are obligated to refuse, and we will support them.
Can a psychologist participate in any CIA or Pentagon interrogation? No. At this point, a psychologist cannot participate in any such interrogation whatsoever. And so how many psychologists does that affect? We don't actually have the exact number. I don't think it's thousands. I think it's probably hundreds. But I'm glad to say that for them, it is now clear what their ethics responsibilities are, and they will now represent psychology in a way that we can all trust. And I'm hoping that this is a huge step toward the profession regaining the public trust, which is what we have to do. Is there anything else you want to accomplish here at this APA meeting? Well, there are many things I want to accomplish at this APA meeting, but I am totally satisfied with this one. <laughs> and Stephen Saltz, your response. You're wearing a button that says... Um, first, do no harm. Um, this is the result of nearly a decade of effort by hundreds and thousands of people. Um, we are, we've been spokespersons, but there have been many, many, many people involved in this. And the, when, the, when the membership of the APA spoke in 2008 in a referendum, they voted 59% to get psychologists out of Guantanamo and CIA black sites. But a small group of APA insiders undermined that. This, re, this reverses that after seven years of um, deceit. So it's a victory for a movement, but I also want to emphasize that it's a victory for the anti-torture movement, that the APA has moved from being complicit in the this, this state-sanctioned torture to being among the leaders in dealing with, that, with uh, state-sanctioned torture and taking strong policies and moving its members out and taking at least a beginning level of accountability for the people in the association who, who were involved in this. And so I think the APA moves from the back of the pack to being a model for other parts of society about how to deal with this. Um, and, and can you talk about the organizing that it took to get to this place after almost a decade? Well, it was basically for many of us, it was basically our life for the last decade. We were writing hundreds of articles, um, organizing uh, psychologists, making alliances with human rights groups, alerting them to what was going on, working like Stephen did within APA and getting on the APA Council and Jean Maria Rigo on the APA Council, working outside to alert the public, working with reporters, getting the, getting the public and the APA leadership to realize that this was a major issue, that this was a scandal that could not be allowed to stand. And, um, you know, it, it takes involved people and dedicated people and we had a lot we had a lot of them Stephen Reisner would you like to add to that yes I just want to I just want to say how grateful we are to the entire community that we worked with we have our talents but there are enormous talents that it require that are required to change the world and when talented people get together and are dedicated to uh, to good, to human rights, human welfare, to to change using our skills, our individual skills for good. It may take 10 years like this one did, but this shows that it is possible to make a significant change. Because right now, even the Obama administration is on notice that the American Psychological Association is opposed to some of the policies that are still in existence. For example, the interrogation policy of the Obama administration includes the Army Fields Manual Appendix N. That appendix uses techniques or permits techniques that have been banned by the UN Committee Against Torture. Today, the American Psychological Association is saying to the Obama administration that we consider that cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment, and none of our members can participate in any of those activities. It's time for you to change that Army Field Manual. It's time for the United States to follow the American Psychological Association and ban any technique, any, uh, any uh, condition that is considered still to be torture, cruel, and human integrating treatment. We want to lead the way and have the Obama administration uh, follow us. How many people are on the council? Um, there are 172 and the vote was overwhelmingly in favor. There was only one opposed, so... That person opposed? That person opposed was Larry James, and Larry James has been a strong voice to keep psychologists in those settings, in the interrogation room, and he 
once he was part of, you know, the he was part of the group that uh, bent the American Psychological Association's uh, rules, I would say, and policies uh, in a way that was secret, and, and I would say part of the, what the Hoffman investigation interrogated but that doesn't mean that he doesn't actually have his own strong feelings about that which he expressed and worked at Guantanamo headed he, up he worked at Guantanamo he was he was supervising these interrogations and is now at Wright State in Dayton Ohio I believe he's still at, he's at Wright State and now but what was really important today was that Larry James was the lone voice that everyone else on this council who voted uh, yes or no, everyone else voted in favor of this policy change. And his voice was not only a minority, abstentions. there were a few abstentions, there were a few recusals, but we voted overwhelmingly in favor and he was the lone voice against. Why was this so important to you personally? Why did you wage this 10-year battle? Um, well, I come from a family where people were tortured in, in the in the Holocaust. I have seen what happens when standards of decency, human rights, and ethics are thrown out in a wave of uh, totalitarian uh, or government uh, uh, zeal. Well, I have seen what happens when you have a government that turns to the dark side and, and breaks all the rules in favor of doing whatever they want. And I have spent my life trying to uphold those standards, trying to make it, I, I'm a psychologist because I believe we answer to an authority that say, that of what is right, not what is law. Because what is law can be twisted and do evil. But so this particular fight, when I saw that psychologists were part of this, that psychologists were using their expertise strategically to help torture and abuse, that psychologists were behind this, I knew I had to speak out. And I did, I didn't expect it to lead to this, I just, you know, spoke out. I'm a psych I'm a psychoanalyst. I usually sit behind the couch silently, but I needed to speak out. And then we joined together with a group of people who spoke out who felt the same way, and we made the change. And Stephen Saltz, for you personally, why this was so important? Well, I kind of wandered into it by writing an article on the APA, but it became clear after a while that if a small group of people didn't really keep the struggle up, they were going to get away with it. And when I was a kid, my hero was Henry David Thoreau, who um, sat in the jail cell, maybe only for a night, um, bec because he was opposed to slavery. And um, the image of standing up, and as I explained to my wife sometimes when I would be preoccupied, when I should have been paying more attention to her and my family, I said, I just can't be one of those who doesn't stand up when I have the, when I have the opportunity. I can't live with myself if that's the case. Um, I've always admired those who did. This was my time to do it. And I knew that if a few of us didn't keep it up, th this would, policy would, would keep on and couldn't live with that. Do you feel like you made history today? Definitely. I do.